welcome back to Global Value. Today, we're performing a fundamental stock analysis of WP Carry Inc., ticker symbol WPC. So we're looking at WP Carry as a subscriber request today. Currently, the business trades for $82.38 per share. And over the last year, WP Carry stock price is up about 3.5%. So their stock is outperforming the market over this period. Over the past five years, WP Carry stock price is up at a rate of 6% annually. Over 10 years, their stock price is only up 19.5% overall, so compounding at a rate of 2% annually. And going back prior to the global financial crisis, over the last 18 years, WP Carry has compounded their stock price at a rate of 5% annually. Keep in mind that the company is a real estate investment trust or a REIT. They have to pay out at least 90% of their after-tax earnings to shareholders as dividends. This means that they're exempt from most corporate taxes. Currently, WP Carry pays out a very significant 5.2% dividend yield. That yield is about three times better than the yield that you'd be receiving from an S&P 500 ETF right now. And so their average dividend yield throughout this time frame would be in addition to these compounded annual returns in their share price. WP Carry is trading about $7 below their 52-week high. The business is up $15 from their 52-week low. Currently, there's a little bit of short interest around the business with a little over 3% of their shares outstanding sold short. And WP Carry has a $17 billion market cap. So they're a large business. For more background about the company, WP Carry Inc. is a real estate investment trust principally involved in the ownership of properties located in the United States, Western Europe, and Northern Europe. WP Carry organizes its operations into real estate and investment management segments. The vast majority of the company's income is derived from its real estate division in the form of lease revenue from long-term agreements with companies. WP Carry's real estate portfolio is primarily comprised of single-tenant office, industrial, warehouse, and retail facilities located around the world. Most of the company's revenue comes from properties in the United States, and the company's investment management unit generates revenue from providing real estate advisory and portfolio management services to other REITs. So for our fundamental analysis today, we are performing the Select 6 analysis, taking a checklist style approach of six standard financial metrics that we're modifying slightly here for a REIT to come to a holistic and beginning understanding of WP Carry based off of their business fundamentals. So this analysis is still a work in progress and it's an opportunity to learn in public. I'm not necessarily an expert on real estate investment trust, but I do want to continue to improve and get better over time. And this analysis will continue to do that as well. So with that said, let's get right into today's analysis. So starting things off with metric number one for a real estate investment trust, here we're looking for their average return on equity to be above 12%. There are two reasons for this for a REIT. So number one, the typical real estate investment trust earns about a 6% average return on equity. And over the long run, over the course of decades, because these are tangible assets, a REIT is likely to return what its underlying business returns. And these underlying returns are going to be captured by return on equity. So by looking for this benchmark of 12% or higher, we can potentially build in some margin of safety for ourselves by looking for real estate investment trusts that are about twice as good as average. Overall, WP Carry's return on equity is down over this time frame, although it has been increasing since 2019. In their most recent fiscal year, the company earned about 7.2% returns on equity. And when we average this out over five years, the business is earning about a 6.5% average return on equity. So just very slightly above average, but pretty close to that average number, much closer to that than our 12% that we're looking for. And so this is going to be an X to start things off here on metric number one. Next up for metric number two, here we're taking a high level overview of the growth of their business over the last five years. So we're looking for revenue, net income, and cash from operations growth here for a REIT. This metric is going to be all or nothing in nature. Either all three of these are going to be up for this to be a check, or if even one of these is down, this entire metric will be an X. Over this time frame, WP Carry has increased their revenues by 60%. They've grown their earnings by 46%. And probably most importantly for the business, their cash from operations has increased by 97%. So they've nearly doubled that over this time frame. All three of these are up here, so this is going to be our first check of the day coming in here on metric number two. Next up for metric number three, here we're taking the perspective of an individual shareholder in WP Carry by looking at the business on a per share basis. So we're looking for earnings per share growth over the last five years. So we learned in the previous metric that their earnings are up 46% over this time frame. However, we still want to look at what the business has done in terms of their shares outstanding. Because of REIT's requirements to pay out the vast majority of their earnings as dividends to shareholders, most REITs are
are externally funded. So it's often the case, especially with acquisition focused rates, that they're going to be diluting shareholders. So in the case of WP Carry, they've actually diluted shareholders by 71% over the last five years alone. They've issued 71% additional shares. In a typical business, we ideally don't like to see this because when you purchase a share of stock or you purchase a share of a REIT, what you're really buying is a fractional ownership percentage in that underlying business. So when a business or a REIT issues new shares and dilutes existing shareholders, they're actually decreasing your ownership percentage of the business's profit. For this to add value to existing shareholders going forward, WP Carry has to be getting more value than the price that they're paying for these acquisitions. And just simply put, it's more difficult to factor that in when paying for acquisitions with shares versus when paying for cash. And in fact, some of the worst investing mistakes that Warren Buffett has made over his entire career in terms of his actual purchases have come from cases where he's purchased businesses by issuing new shares. This is less likely to be the case because REITs are mostly tangible assets. However, summing up here, this shareholder dilution is outpacing their earnings growth over this time frame. And so this is going to be an X here on metric number three, as the company has only earned $2.99 for each share that they had outstanding in their most recent fiscal year. Next up for metric number four, here we're looking for something similar. So here we're looking for free cash flow per share growth over the last five years for the business. So in contrast to their earnings, their free cash flows are actually up at a rate that's faster than their shareholder dilution. Of the two, it's likely a good thing that this would be the case. And because their free cash flow growth outpaces their shareholder dilution, this is a check here on metric number four. In their most recent fiscal year, WP Carry produced $5.03 worth of free cash flow for each share that they had outstanding. Next up for metric number five, here we're evaluating how the business is utilizing leverage. So REITs are likely to be more highly levered than typical businesses. Due to the fact that real estate assets are likely able to take on higher percentages of leverage compared to the underlying asset versus what companies are willing to lend for other assets. So here we want their net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments to be below the amount of cash from operations that WP Carry has produced over their last five years. So the company has added on to their net debt position over this time frame. Currently, the business has about a $7.9 billion net debt position. And over these last five years, when we add these up in total, WP Carry has produced about $4 billion in cash from operations. So that's only about half of their current net debt position. Again, because these assets are typically able to be levered more highly than other types of assets, this may or may not be a potential concern for you. And, and if you're interested in finding out more, you would just want to dig into the company's filings. The company will break out their debt profile in more detail. You'll be able to get a better perspective of how this debt is structured, when it matures, what rates it's at, and if there are any covenants associated with this debt. So because their cash from operations are below their net debt levels, this is an X here on metric number five. One other thing we want to point out here is that over these last five years, WP Carry has purchased about four and a half billion dollars worth of acquisitions of real estate assets. So they've acquired about a fifth of their overall total enterprise value worth of their real estate assets within the last five years alone. Then for our sixth and final metric, the big metric of them all, we want their average cash from operations to their total enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this may provide us a slight risk premium in comparison to the yield of the 10-year treasury, and it may offer us a reasonable starting point for evaluation of WP Carry. So we're using their total enterprise value because it takes into account both their market cap and their net debt position, and it's going to give us a perspective of the business that's more similar as if WP Carry were a private company. So currently, WP Carry has about a $25 billion dollar total enterprise value. And we learned in our previous metric that the business has produced $4 billion worth of cash from operations in their last five years, meaning that in an average year, WP Carry produces about $810 million of their cash from operations. So when we divide their $810 million of average cash from operations by their $25 billion total enterprise value, that gives us about a 3.2% average cash from operations to enterprise value yield for the business. So that's coming in both below the yield of the 10-year treasury, and that's also below that risk premium where ideally seeking. And so on an average basis here, this is an X on metric number six. Worth being aware of is that in their most recent fiscal year, the company produced $1 billion cash from operations, meaning that right now the business has about a 4% current cash from operations to enterprise value yield. So that would be about in line with the yield of the 10-year treasury. But again, that's below that 5% risk premium we'd ideally be seeking. So just because this is an X here doesn't mean that you're going to toss the business out in its entirety. Keep in mind that this is not a buy or sell recommendation of any security 
security, and that this is just one of our six metrics. While these metrics are simple, they're meant to be holistic, and when they're combined together, they can be very powerful. Even though this was our final metric, you'll still want to stick around because there's some interesting things that you might be missing out on in this business. As a bonus, here we're taking a look at WP Carry's dividend profile. So again, WP Carry currently pays out a 5.2% dividend yield, which is nearly three times better than the yield that you'd be receiving from an S&P 500 ETF right now. However, people make mistakes all the time by blindly chasing dividends, so it's important to stop and look at the underlying fundamentals of a business and to determine whether a company's dividend payouts are well supported by either their earnings or their free cash flows depending on the type of business. For WP Carry, we're looking at their dividends compared to their free cash flows here, and in all five of these years, the business's cash flows were able to support their dividend, and they've been growing their dividend and their free cash flows over this time frame. Again, for tax advantages, REITs have the requirement of paying out 90% of their after-tax earnings as dividends to shareholders, so it's not surprising to see that their payout ratios are pretty high compared to their cash flows here. But with growth across the board here for both of these, it would seem like WP Carry would likely be in a good position to keep increasing their dividends into the future, and that this dividend is well supported by their cash flows. Again, though, this is a snapshot of their past five years of performance, and this is no guarantee for the future. Then everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that in my opinion is the main reason to analyze WP Carry, which takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to come to a potential fair intrinsic value for WP Carry. So a discounted cash flow model is just like any other model in any other discipline. Its outputs are going to be sensitive to its inputs. So here we're starting with their current free cash flows per share, and we're using historical growth assumptions dating back all the way till 1990 in order to project these free cash flows out into the future. So it's up to you to do your own homework here to determine whether or not these historical growth assumptions are going to be accurate and applicable for WP Carry going forward over the next 20 years. If we assume that they grow their current free cash flows at a rate of 4.5% annually for the next 10 years, and then that that growth rate slows down to growing at a rate of 3% annually for the 10 years out after that, so projecting 20 years out into the future in total, if we add in the company's tangible book value, which gives us a perspective of the company's tangible net worth, and if we were seeking a 15% rate of return, which is the rate of return that Warren Buffett is ideally looking for from his investments, in addition to his requirements for margin of safety, it looks like from today's valuations of WP Carry that a reasonable fair intrinsic value for the business is around $63 per share. That's down $19 from the business's current stock price, and that's also about $4 below the business's 52-week lows, so it would look like the company is trending toward being more more overly valued than fairly valued. However, keep in mind that this is just an estimate. A discounted cash flow model is really based off the predictability of a business's future free cash flows. WP Carry has not had the most predictable free cash flows in the past, so that could potentially be the case into the future as well. Also worth mentioning is that the company's 5.2% dividend yield would be included in this discount rate of 15%, so we would not be doubly counting their dividends here. So please be mindful of the fact that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security, and before before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with the properly licensed and registered legal and financial professionals. So in summary, WP Carry checks the box on two out of our six metrics. The business earns just slightly above average returns on equity. They have grown strongly, increasing their earnings, their revenues, and their cash from operations over the last five years. Similar to many other REITs, they've done so through external funding by diluting existing shareholders by 71% over this time frame and taking on more debt, increasing their net debt position. It doesn't look like the business was fully able to support their debt loads with their cash from operations like we'd ideally be seeking. But again, that may or may not be a potential concern here for the business as a REIT. Also, it didn't look like either on a current or an average basis of their cash from operations to their enterprise value that WP Carry was offering us that risk premium we'd ideally be seeking in comparison to the yield of the 10-year treasury. It did look like their dividend profile was healthy and supported by their free cash flows in all five of the previous years, and that it has the potential to be sustainable into the future as well. Again, dependent on the performance of the business, but they have increased their free cash flows and their dividend payouts through all five of these years. Finally, performing a discounted cash flow analysis of WP Carry. If you've done the work and you believe that those historical growth assumptions are going to be accurate and applicable for the business going forward, and you were ideally seeking a 15% rate of return from the business, then it looks like from today's valuations of the company that a reasonable fair intrinsic value for WP Carry is right around $63 per share. The last time that the business traded around those levels was in October of 2020, so if that's going to be 
accurate for the business going forward, then you would just want to be patient as you do the work to dig in and learn even more about the business. Again, it's worth reiterating that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with your financial advisor. This analysis instead serves as a beginning and holistic understanding to help you determine whether it's worth your time and energy to dig in and learn more about WP Carry. One resource that will definitely help you stay up to speed with what's going on in the market and help you learn more about the business is Seeking Alpha. Checking out Seeking Alpha directly supports the channel as I'm part of their affiliate program. So most of you probably know Seeking Alpha as a source of community written articles on different stocks. But over the past little while, they've actually become a lot more than that with their new offering, which is Seeking Alpha Premium. Premium has a number of different features where you can track buy, hold, and sell ratings on your favorite stocks. These ratings are from the Seeking Alpha community, Wall Street analysts, and Seeking Alpha's algorithm. You can see earnings call transcripts, investor presentations, SEC filings, and press releases all in one place. You can add your own margin of safety targets and get alerts for when your favorite stocks hit that level. You can get unlimited access to Seeking Alpha articles, and you can take tailor your reading experience based on the type of investor you are. You can get 10 years of financial data on any stock to help you with your analysis. You can also import your portfolio into your Seeking Alpha dashboard to make researching easier. And if that didn't convince you, the best thing is that an annual plan is only 119 bucks. That's just 33 cents per day through my referral link down in the description below. Normally premium is $239, but if you use my link, it's 50% off. So check it out if you're interested. So through this deeper research, you'll learn more about the qualitative and the quantitative aspects of WP Carry, and you'll likely be able to determine for yourself what a reasonably appropriate intrinsic value for the company will be. So as a value investor, you're ultimately trying to conduct this research as if you're going to own 100% of a business, and you can learn the ins and outs of that company, learning about it accurately, completely, and then going back and asking yourself, what did you miss in order to come to understand the underlying essence of the business? So with that said, that's it for today's fundamental stock analysis of WP Carry Inc., ticker symbol WPC. Again, with the business checking the box on two of our six metrics, it looks like WP Carry is a weak candidate in terms of its attractiveness for further research. But if you're potentially interested in the business, please don't let that discourage you from digging in and learning more about the company. Again, we had looked at the business as a subscriber request today, so I'm happy to make an analysis of the company. And if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to check out next time. Thanks for learning about WP Carry with me, and have a great day.